In today's episode, you will learn how to use the Blink application terminal widget to display the census data using Node MCU, ESP8266 Wi Fi module, and Arduino. If you are using Arduino, then you should be quite familiar with Serial Monitor, which is used for reading the strings and census data. Serial Monitor is usually used for the debugging purposes. Using the Blink application terminal widget, you can monitor your sensors from anywhere around the world. Today's episode covers number one, circuit diagram, number two, programming, and finally number three, testing. Let's get started. The components that we will need for this project are number one, Arduino, number two, a variable resistor or potentiometer which will be used as a sensor. As you can see, I have already soldered three jumper wires so that it can be easily interfaced with the Arduino. Number three, Node MCU ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. Number four, five by seven centimeter wearer board. Number five, 470 microfarad capacitors. We will need two of these. Number six, female DC socket. Number seven, 7805 voltage regulator. First leg is the input, middle one is the ground, and the third one is the output. Number eight, LED. The longer leg is the anode, and the shorter one is the cathode. Number nine, 330 ohm resistor, and finally, number 10, female headers. These components can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. This project is based on my previous two tutorials. In this tutorial, you will learn how to install the Node MCU ESP8266 Wi-Fi board and how to download and use the Blink library and how to fix the USB UART driver error. While in this tutorial, you will learn how to make a power supply for Node MCU ESP8266 Wi-Fi module so that it can be easily powered up using a 12 volt adopter or battery the tutorial links are given in the description so this is the final circuit that we'll be using today if you are using node mcu with arduino or mega and you're not using many sensors then you don't need this power supply you can power up the node mcu module using arduino or mega let me tell you once again if you are using many sensors, then I recommend you should use a separate power supply for this. Let's have a look at the complete circuit diagram. This schematic is designed in Kitesoft Eagle 9.1.0 version. If you want to learn how to make a schematic and PCB, then watch my tutorial. The link is given in the description. This is the 5 volt regulated power supply based on the LM7805 voltage regulator. As I said earlier, if you are not using many sensors, then you don't need this power supply. In this project, is we will be using only one sensor, which is a variable resistor. So that's why we don't need this power supply. That's why the VN pin of the Node MCU is connected with the Arduino's 5 volt, and the ground pin of the Node MCU is connected with the Arduino's ground. But if you have connected many sensors, then simply connect a, a wire from the output of the voltage regulator with the VN pin of the Node MCU. As the Node MCU will communicate with Arduino through serial communication, so for this we need a serial port. As I always say, never use the Arduino's default serial port for communication with other devices. Use Arduino's default serial port only for the debugging purposes. So now the question is, if we are using the Arduino's default serial port for the debugging purposes, then how we will communicate with the Node MCU module? Well, my friends, no worries at all. We can define multiple serial ports using the software serial library, which I will explain in programming. So as you can see, the Node MCU RX pin is connected with the Arduino pin number 3 and the Node MCU the X pin is connected with the Arduino's pin number 2 and the ground is connected with the Arduino's ground. A variable resistor is connected with the analog pin A0 of the Arduino while the remaining two clicks of the variable resistor are connected with 3.3 volts and ground. 
First of all, open the Blink application. Set the project name is Arduino Node MCU. If you want, you can set any other name. Click on the Choose Device and select Node MCU. Make sure you set the connection type to Wi Fi. Then click on the Create button. An authentication token will be sent on your email ID, which will be then used in the programming. This is the authentication token. We will simply copy this and paste it in our programming. Now click anywhere on the screen and search for the terminal and click to aid. Now click on the terminal. Click on the pin and select virtual pin 12. Our basic application setup is completed. Now let's discuss the programming. In this project we are using two sketches, one for the Arduino and the other one for the Node MCU. So first let's discuss the Arduino programming. We start with hash include software serial dot h. Hash include means that this is a preprocessor directive and dot h means that this is a header file. So with the help of this, you can make multiple serial ports. So let's define a serial port with the name node MCU on pin number 2 and pin number 3 of the Arduino. Software serial node MCU 2,3. Pin number 2 is the RX and pin number 3 is the TX. Integer V resistor is equal to A0. A variable resistor is connected with the analog pin A0 of the Arduino. Integer V data is equal to 0. This is a variable of the type integer and will be used to store the value of the variable resistor. String my string. My string is a variable of the type string. As you know, my friends, every Arduino and Mega program has at least two functions, which are the white setup and white loop functions. White means that this function is not returning any value while the empty parentheses means that this function is not taking any arguments as the input. Serial dot begin 9600 activates the serial communication at the baud rate of 9600. This will be used for the debugging purposes. Node MCU dot begin 9600 activates the serial communication with node MCU connected with pin number 2 and pin number 3 of the Arduino and 9600 is the baud rate. Pin mode is a function and it takes two arguments as the input, the pin number or pin name which is V resistor and the status which can be input or output. Then starts a while loop function V data equals analog read V resistor, read the variable resistor and stores the value in V data. My string is equal to my string plus a variable resistor plus V data. We make a complete message and send it to the node MCU module and also send it to the serial monitor and then empty the my string a variable for new data and then a delay of one second is 1000 milliseconds or equal to one second. Now let's discuss the node MCU programming. Before you start the programming, first of all, make sure that you download all the necessary libraries and you install the Node MCU board and you also install a driver for the USB UART. I have a separate video on this, the link is given in the description. This is the authentication number which was sent via email. I simply copied and pasted over here. This is the name of your Wi Fi 
and this is the password. The installs a wide set of function. I have already explained these instructions in my previous tutorials on Node MCU ESP8266 Wi-Fi module. The while loop function consists of two if conditions. This condition means if node MCU module hasn't received any data, then simply keep executing these two functions. While this condition means if the node MCU module has received data from the Arduino, then simply read the node MCU module and add the received characters with the myString variable to make a complete message. White sensor value 1 is data is equal to my string blink dot virtual write v12 comma is data v12 is the virtual pin this instruction simply sends the string message to the blink application terminal and then we empty the string these programs can be downloaded from my blog page the link is given in the description I have already uploaded these sketches. Now let's watch this project in action. Click on the Blink application. Click on the play button to run the application. As you can see, I can receive the data. Now if I click on the serial monitor, you can see I receive the same exact values. Now let me change this value Now you can see the value is changed to 34 Let me further decrease this value Now you can see the value is 0 This way you can monitor multiple sensors from anywhere around the world I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.